So that's another way you can represent your molecular structure. Um, and again, notice that I didn't really have to work in the attribute editor or any of these settings. So I'm just still doing all my work within Molecular Maya. So I'm going to set, uh, I'm going to turn off Backbone Viz. So that goes just goes back and we can see we have the wire still visible here because wire trace visible is still on. And then I'm going to go up to meshing. So this will create a surface that basically wraps around the entire structure. Uh, another popular way to represent uh, uh, proteins. So uh, if I go to the meshing section in the main tab of Molecular Maya and turn on Mesh Viz, it'll take a few seconds, but what you'll see is kind of a big blob uh, over each one of the chains in the structure. Now, what's creating these blobs? These are actually uh, end particles uh, that have been assigned to each atom in the structure, and then um, the meshing for the end particle has been turned on within the end particle tab. But again, I don't have to worry about that because all the controls that I need to con for the meshing are actually available here within M within the molecular Maya interface. Um, so if I want to start to increase the uh, amount of detail in these individual structures, what I can do is I can, um, I can mess with these settings right here, which allow me to create custom settings. But it's probably a good idea just to go down to the presets and start then, there and then tweak if you need to. So I'll go down to, in the meshing settings, I'll go down and press the medium preset. And it's going to take a few seconds to update. So now we can see we've got a little bit more detail in there. And then I can also click on the high settings to create a high level of detail. And again, this will take a bit longer to update. Okay, and there we see we have more detail. And then if I want to, I can start to play with these settings, you know, increase the resolution, the smoothness, the threshold, blobby, and so on and so forth. And then after you adjust these settings, just remember to hit the update button, and then it will update and you'll see your changes take place. And remember, you know, the more resolution you add to your um, settings, the longer it will take to update. So be aware of that. There's some rendering options here within the Molecular Maya inter interface, which are very interesting. Um, in uh, For one... Uh, for example, they have ambient occlusion color per vertex available. So what this does is this actually renders ambient occlusion for the surface, bakes the ambient occlusion shading uh, to the vertices of the surface, which means that uh, without needing uh, to use mental ray, you can render nice ambient occlusion uh, models using Maya software or Maya hardware or whatever um, directly uh, just from uh, working with these controls here. So uh, what I want to do is... Um, if I go down here, I can change the settings. I'm going to leave them at their defaults. So the default uh, occlusion rays is 32, and the filter size is 0.04. If I press the Bake button and wait a few minutes, you'll see that it's actually rendering down here, this little progress bar. And once it's done, you'll actually see the shading appear on the surface. So there we go. We have ambient occlusion shading available right on the surface here within Maya. And then another option you can use is Bake to Black and White if you don't want these colors as part of the surface. So I'll just click on Bake to Black and White and then press the Bake button again. And it's going to do another render and you'll see that shadowing information appear on uh, essentially a monochromatic version or a white version of the structure. So there we go. And if I want to go back to my regular shaded view, I could just press the toggle CPV display, and that goes back to the uh, regular view. And then the shaders that are applied to these surfaces uh, have been generated automatically um, f using uh, from Molecular Maya. And if I open up the Hypershade, you'll see all the shaders that have been created automatically. And if I want to go back to that baked version, just turn on the toggle CPV d display. Anytime I need to change these settings here, um, I just have to remember to press the bake button after changing the settings for it to update. Another interesting feature that I wanted to demonstrate is the biological unit feature. And what this is, well, I'll give you a little bit of background of this structure. Uh, so this is the way the structure looks like when I first import it. If I go to the www 
PDB entry page by clicking on this button here, you'll see that the entire structure is actually spherical and it's made up of a repeating pattern based on this initial structure. So what you see in Maya here, right, this right here, is actually, and what I'll do is uh, just to make it a little bit more obvious, let me uh, turn off the CPV display. So I'll turn this off um, and then go back to Safari. You can see this is colored as well. And this entire structure is essentially uh, a, a sphere generated out of multiple copies of this structure right here. If I wanted to create this by hand, I might be a, uh, up a creek a little bit because it's a very large structure and plus this specific arrangement is not something that's very easily determined um, in Maya by hand. But uh, this information on the arrangement of these uh, subunits to create the virus is actually contained in a separate file that's also available on the PDB site. And uh, I don't actually have to hunt around for it at all. There's controls within Molecular Maya that allow me to download and apply those settings without leaving an eye at all. And that's essentially what's going on in the biological unit section of molecular Maya. So if I want to get that file, all I got to do is click on the download from PDB button. Now uh, these uh, biological unit files are not available for every single structure on uh, the PDB site, uh, but a lot of them do have it. If, if the structure is not available, you'll get a little warning message letting you know that it doesn't exist. But I do know that uh, the biological unit file for this structure does exist. So just click on that button and it will automatically download it. And uh, on another monitor I have a little download message showing me the percentage of how long it's taken to download. Uh, it's about 11 megabytes, so it doesn't take very long. Once it has downloaded, you can see that the biological unit interface section of Molecular Maya has changed, and now I have a bunch of options for how I want to represent the uh, rest of the structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on meshes, and what Molecular Maya is going to do is it's going to duplicate my original PDB file, and those duplicates are and those duplicates are going to be instances. So that means that uh, each duplicate is not does not have a unique shape node. They all share the same shape node, which means that um, the update is much faster than uh, if it was a straight duplicate where you know every part of the structure was an individual node. Um, so that's kind of convenient and I can just turn this on and off but just by clicking on the meshes button. I can also uh, choose something like if I wanted to do backbones for the rest of the surface but keep my original part as a mesh. Let me just turn on the backbone section you'll see now I have this kind of representation, which is also a popular way to sort of dis um, display proteins. And I'm going to turn off backbones and switch back to meshes. And uh, I'm going to switch to the render cam that I have set up in this file. And there you can see there's the whole structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this uh, right now as... Um, M Maya Demo version 1. So just click on that, do save as. This will be available on the DVD as well. So now I have the, uh, the whole structure. Uh, now if you open this file um, from the DVD, it's possible that uh, if you haven't downloaded the structure, um, it will not be, uh, you might have a broken link to the actual structure, so it might not display correctly. But if you've downloaded the same structure, 1CD3, and open this file, you should be able to see the structure. So I'd like to demonstrate a couple things now that I have the complete structure. The first thing I want to demonstrate is, uh, once again, baking the ambient occlusion, because when I bake the ambient occlusion, it is going to take into account the entire structure. So you'll see that the uh, shading will be more accurate, uh, and it creates a really nice looking uh, result. So again, I'm going to go to the meshing section within Molecular Maya, and click on Bake, because I need to recreate the um, uh, the shading. and uh, in this case, I'll turn off Bake to Black and White, and I'll just press Bake. It's going to take a little bit of time, of course. Oh, man. Okay, so now you can see that the, uh, the ambient occlusion shading has been baked into the surface, giving it a really nice-looking uh, or appealing uh, quality. You can sort of see the depth in the 3D structure even a little bit better. Um, and again, I can turn this on and off just by pressing the toggle CPV Display.